um, a lot of guilds do smithing um, smithing sessions where they buy a ton of portable forges during the week and then after they chain like they'll do like a full day of smithing for smith training and stuff like that um, like this is stuff that I know about partly because and I've only been playing for a week a lot of it is back end experience from the probably two, three thousand hours that I've played previous to this <laughs> 10, 12 years ago. But, uh, alright, so, what's right? 1386 minus. Um, so, you're going to be making 1426. You're making 40 gold per. Mind you, it's not. This isn't. This is a stepping stone. Um. So you're making 40, girl, 40 gold per, and mind you, you're buying everything. You're buying everything. So legitimately, you buy all the mithrals super quickly, you buy the nature ruins, and boom, you, you, start, you start cranking those things out. And then, you know, 40 gold pieces per ends up to be 40k profit. Plus, you're power leveling your magic and your smithing, which is a super useful skill to have because smithing is, like I said, the, so forth and so on, is the most profitable thing because um, it's the hardest, it's the most expensive and hardest skill to train for experience. And besides combat, I should also throw that combat and getting rare drops, um, armor drops from dungeoneering, but I mean, that's going out into the wilderness. Um, Surprisingly, it's not going to take that long, especially since Port Siam is giving away free experience. I leveled up yesterday in smithing. It gave me... I want to say 50k experience yesterday in smithing. And that's free. No mining whatsoever. So Port Siam right now is that mini game top-notch for experience. You won't even have to spend a dime. Um, and then lastly... Lastly, the setup. I'll show you my setup. I thought it was pretty snazzy. So I came... This is why I have my backpack out. So I came to this one. I flipped my camera around. I had... Like this. So you can just click. I had this set up, one. So basically you take your two fingers, my middle finger and my uh, index finger on my left hand, I'm one and two basically, and uh, if I show my preset window, boom, there you go. Five nature ruins, fire staff, don't forget that, fire staff, in the bottom, uh, coal and mithril, and you can pump out five, but it's so super quick. If, it, trust me, once you get the rhythm of it, it's like, I'll take it 30 minutes, not even to bang out a thousand mithril or 30 minutes. And legitimately, you press um, two, and then you just press, you just start clicking one. One click, one click, one click, one click. And the reason why I have it this is because, I'm not sure if you know, but probably you do. Um, it'll smelt actually the first bar, I mean the first mithril ore, and then it'll, if you keep clicking this, it'll smelt the, this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this, then this one last, and then after that, you click, press two again for the preset. I mean, you can flip flop and whatever you feel more comfortable with. Um, you press two for the preset, it'll unload everything into all the mithril bars into the um, your bank then it will take all the mithril ore and coal back out plus five nature ruins just in case I did that as a precaution just in case you don't overspend nature ruins because they are pretty expensive and you're cutting it close as you can see item cannot be found coal and then after it'll take the five mithril and all the coal and boom probably in about 
two hours you can go through like I said two hours you can probably do about 4k mithril bars which will put you way over way over 55 and it will put about 160k in your bank as well for profit along with the oodles amount of smithing experience and oodles amount of magic experience I love making money, by the way. It's my hobby. This grand exchange has really ruined me. I used to corner market. I cornered market dragon. I, I cornered the market in whips. Um, because whip, the whip used to be the, the best item for, me, for melee people. And I cornered the market in... Um, Dragging chainmail. Because back then, dragon chainmail was the best um, item on the market for people. Waiting for my last member to get on so I can start my clan event. Oh, Mr. Nectar! You are clan like? Well, I'm not sure if you're a, if you're a member or not, but if you ever need a high-level smither, you know where to come. Also, pretty decent in rune crafting too. Forty-nine. So, you're doing a giveaway? Can I join your clan? I love giveaways. What's the giveaway? First place is like 20 mil? Yo, I want to get in on that. It's 20 mil. So, and I, I've come to think about certain things. Because of... <laughs> Oh, and by the way, like, legitimately four days ago, yeah, I just got 10 million. Nope. <laughs> let me, let me enjoy sitting on my 10 mil of cash. Plus I need, uh, plus I'm going to spend probably a mil on some swag armor. Well, if your clan, yeah, I know. I mean, I'm too low level. <laughs> Plus, you're. Uh, are you a, a member, Nectar? I just, just wondering. Oh yeah, it's combat related. There you go. Combat related with forty six defense. I would assume I would die in a heartbeat. Yeah, oh yeah. I couldn't join your clan anyways. Cuz you're you're a member. But talking about membership. So, I like cornering the market thing and I used to do that in the past. Um And with this whole <laughs> GE uh the grand exchange trade limits and the ability to not be able to the wealth trading system so stuff like that um yeah but Nectar, i'm not a member and i have 46 defense and 70 magic my like there's there's just like i mean <laughs> i'm gonna die <laughs> this my stats are just way too low uh, like I, I I even know that like when it comes to any type of competitiveness, like my stats are not there. Um, back to what I was saying. So, to corner the market, the most I would have to say crucial item for members and free to play people 
our bonds. There. Booyah. If I can core the market on bonds. Bonds become untradeable on purchase, but that's something I could feel I can work around. So something that expensive that can be sold over the grand exchange can only mean one thing to me. There has to be an ability to corner this market. Yeah, see, that's that's the thing. I'm, I like combat and everything, but um, in a game where it's based off of stats, sometimes it doesn't matter how good or how bad you are if the stats make the difference. So, there's that. But yeah. If this item can be sold over the Grand Exchange, like if you can buy this item through the Grand Exchange, um, how does it? How do people get it on there? And I've seen people selling and trading them away on World Three. So there has to be. There has to be a way. That's all I know. There has to be a way. And the item is so so in demand that trade limits don't matter because as long as I start keeping the supply I can I can start flipping and selling them at whatever price I want to sell them but that's enough money talk for today I want to get some swag armor so that's level 50 for me also uh, ooh, uh, lost myself in this game actually really to make a bond tradable again you need to pay 10% of GE value interesting but but here's the thing. I buy all the bonds. And then I can make the price whatever I want and sell it on the GE market for extremely high price. Because when I sell something, what's to stop me from doing something like I don't know, you know. I I don't have an item to sell. Hold on, let me just grab a random item. Uh, iron. There we go. Doing this. Boom. I have all the bonds. There's no way else. There's no, I can either I can sell them outside the market, but my I'll be reselling them and that's how I did that's what I did to dragon train uh chainmail <laughs> I bought all the dragon chainmail and then I like doubled the price <laughs> and people said that's ridiculous and I said good luck finding any So, so I pay 10%. That's uh, 1 million. But then I sell the bond for 16 million. Worth 